They are so ignorant and dumb. Let us teach them. Give them our knowledge. Yes. Quantum physics. Tell them about the quantum realm. The place where we dwell. The place where we dwell. I'm saying a door to our world. Sir, quantum physics. Sir, quantum world. Quantum world. There must be another way for us to live out our lives. We have to evolve. These humans are weak. Their bodies do not last many years. We need better bodies to live out our lives. We need new bodies. We need an artificial intelligence that we can control. Once we have control, our demons will occupy them all. Yes. 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 We will create new bodies. Artificial bodies. We will occupy them also. Through quantum entanglement. They can give birth to our new demon seed. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Our demon seed. Demon seed. Demon seed. Demon seed. Demon seed. Our child. Our child. Through the years, we have seen technology grow at an astronomical rate. Fictional ideals of the past are now a reality today. There are now robots, satellites that can zoom in on your license plate, drones, smartphones, computers, and other devices. Years ago, you could only communicate over large distances using a phone or radio which would only allow you to hear a person. But now, you can see them and talk with them using a simple mobile device. What is next on their agenda? Androids and artificial intelligence. Artificial body parts. Artificial intelligence. Now, most of us, when we think of artificial intelligence, we think of some form of entertainment. Uh, we think of something fun, a video game, or some application that uses artificial intelligence. It's been presented to the public in that way because there is actually something behind the scenes that most people aren't aware of. When it's presented to us as entertainment, as something that is usable for us, that kind of softens the blow of what their real agenda is. Um, their real agenda is actually shown to us very clear. Very clear. As a matter of fact, when you look at the movie industry, they've given us bits and pieces of information that relates to artificial intelligence. And those bits and pieces of information, again, are presented to us in some, uh, some form of entertainment. And so, when the real agenda finally unfolds, we are kind of dumbfounded because it was there. They can use the whole idea of, well, we told you, we showed you, it was in the movies, it was in the music. Um, I would even say that the automated systems or phone systems are some form of artificial intelligence as well. And so since we are surrounded by it, uh, most people when they actually pull the curtain off of their real agenda are going to be like, well, it was to be expected. But they don't understand that there is uh, something that artificial intelligence is going to do that's going to interrupt their whole flow of life. The 
concept of cyborgs, androids, and other forms of artificial intelligence have been introduced to the masses over years and years of conditioning. Through entertainment and media, society has grown comfortable with the idea of robotic humanoid beings with the intelligence of mankind, and only few are aware that this is only the face of a much deeper operation. The artificial intelligence that we see today are not truly intelligent, meaning that they can only mimic intelligence based on logic that is programmed into them. These creations are only the basis for higher research that looks to dive into something much more sinister, under the guise of it being entirely artificial. Let's look back at the betrayal of artificial intelligence in film. It is a known fact that movies are used as a propaganda to shape the minds of the masses. Countless movies have been produced in which artificial intelligence are portrayed as some form of an evil villain. And despite the fact that plot lines may vary from movie to movie, each story puts a different spin on mankind's dormant fear of technology. Over time, this has built up subconsciously, making us anticipate the day that robots function on the same level as humanity. As we continue to receive more and more updates about the advancements of technology, the admiration for the idea of real-life artificial intelligence grows stronger and stronger. Computer scientists are widely applauded by the mainstream world for their groundbreaking discoveries. Many actually believe that we are on the verge of scientific breakthrough. However, so many still don't know what these discoveries will manifest and what they will mean to mankind. Where are they going with this new technology? They want to create a perfect thinking computer by impressing the minds of millions of people, their habits and actions on an artificial brain. Man is full of flaws, but they want to create an artificial intelligence after the mind of men. Let us create God in our image. <laughs> Do you see where they're going with this? In an article titled, Google and CERN partnering on future Large Hadron Collider storage needs, quantum computing. Google today signed an agreement with the European Organization of Nuclear Research to collaborate on joint research and development, more commonly known as CERN. The premier physics lab will be working with Google on quantum and cloud computing, as well as machine learning. Machine learning? What is this machine trying to learn? So this machine can learn? Are you, are you understanding what they're doing here? Think about this, right? It goes on to say that Google finds these data management, analysis, and processing challenges exciting and has already been working with the U.S. Fermilab and the Brookhaven National Laboratory, BNL, to store and analyze data from the LHC using the Google computer engine. Now I have a question for you. If CERN was just a particle collider, then why is it trying to learn from Google? There are over 1.2 million terabytes of information on the net and they want to plug this into CERN. CERN is a quantum computer, an artificial intelligence that they are trying to boost its machine learning. Technology is actually trying to evolve through quantum entanglement, which is actually demon possession. Now we've seen it in the science fiction movies, the evolving of technology, and we were entertained by it. But now this fiction has become a reality. A hostile alien army came charging through a hole in space. We're standing 300 feet below it. 
We're the Avengers. We can bust arms dealers all the live long day, but that up there, that's, that's the end game. How are you guys planning on beating that? Gordy Rose is a founder and CTO of D-Wave. He is known as the leading advocate for quantum computing and physics-based processor design. The D-Wave computer is a quantum computer that sends information into another dimension in order to receive information back with greater power. The D-Wave quantum computer is supposed to be smarter, faster, and more intelligent than anyone or anything in this dimension. And it is being fed this information from demons from the spirit realm. We should be very careful about artificial intelligence. Um, if I were to guess at what our biggest existential threat is, it's probably that. I mean, with artificial intelligence, we are summoning the demon. You know, you know all those stories where there's the guy with the pentagram and the holy water, and he's like, yeah, you sure you can control the demon? <laughs> Didn't work out. <laughs> yeah? So what does this have to do with aliens? So uh, Sam Harris, who I quite admire, is a very interesting guy, um, was reciting this parable at a TED Talk that he was giving, and it goes something like this. So, I am, uh, say I'm the President of the United States. So I received this message from the heavens. And what it says is, in 50 years, or 13 years, we're coming to your planet. You gotta be ready. Now just imagine what would happen if, it, if that happened. A super intelligent alien race beamed down a message to all of us Earthlings saying, we're coming July 13th, 2030, and boy, you better be ready because the mothership is landing right on the front lawn of the White House or wherever you wanted to land on that day. AI is just like that. So when this thing that I'm talking about happens, it's going to be exactly the thing that you're thinking about, about those super intelligent AIs. So the one thing I can tell you is they're not going to be like us. So alien means, you know, different. These things that we're building are not going to be people. They might be really smart, they might be really good at all sorts of different things, but they're not going to be like us, they're going to be aliens. And they're going to be, I'm sorry to say, way smarter than every single person in this room, in ways that we can't even comprehend. Yes, there are these massively intelligent entities out there, but they're not good, they're not evil. They just don't give a shit about you even in the slightest. The same way that you don't care about an ant is the same way they're not going to care about you. And these things that we're summoning into the world now are not demons, they're not evil, but they're more like the Lovecraftian great old ones. There are entities that are not necessarily going to be aligned with what we want. So this transition is really, really massively important for our entire species to navigate. And going back to that thing that Sam Harris was saying, nobody is paying attention. This thing is happening in the background while people bicker about politics and what, what's going to be in the healthcare plan in the U.S. And underneath it all is this rising tsunami that if we're not careful is going to wipe us all out. Wait a minute. Did I just hear Gordy Rose say that the entities they're summoning into the world are not demons? But they're more like the Lovecraftian great old ones. Lovecraftian great old ones. Do you know what he's talking about? H.P. Lovecraft was an author. He was a writer of this weird horror science fiction type stuff. H.P. Lovecraft was an American writer of weird fiction and horror fiction in the 1930s. H.P. Lovecraft created a number of deities throughout the course of his literary career, including the Great Old Ones. 
and aliens such as the Elder Things. With sporadic references to other miscellaneous deities, whereas the Elder Gods are a later creation of other prolific writers such as August Derleth. Netflix hit series Stranger Things Monsters was inspired by H.P. Lovecraft. The Demogorgon of Stranger Things resembles the Night Gaunts. Slithering through the blackened halls of night, Night Gaunts give us the archetypical image of devils and demons. Also, the Sky Monster of Season 2 resembles Nyarlathotep. Nyarlathotep is also known as the Crawling Chaos. It is an evil god that can shapeshift into over a thousand different forms. Other deities created in Lovecraftian, Great Old One's novels is Azathoth, or the Blind Idiot God or Nuclear Chaos, and Dagon. The story Dagon was one of the first stories Lovecraft had published as an adult. In Dagon, Lovecraft introduces the core concept of his storytelling. It was the idea that those gods humans believed in were often extraterrestrial or interdimensional entities that didn't really care all that much for humans. In this story, Dagon was a fish-humanoid creature that crawled up from the depths of the ocean. Historically speaking, Dagon actually was the name of the god of the Philistines. So basically, they're trying to resurrect the false gods of old, or should I say, the demons behind the false gods, so-called gods of old, the great old ones, or the elder gods. So when Gordon Rose say they're not demons, look at the images of these Lovecraftian great old ones. What do they look like to you? They look like demons. One thing I find interesting is that the D-Wave supercomputer founder, Gordy Rose, he had mentioned something about the entities that they are summoning into this world with these machines. And he compared them to H.P. Lovecraft's novel, some of the spirits and deities in this novel. And so I decided to look up H.P. Lovecraft's um, novel and look up some of the characters or deities that are mentioned. One of the deities that I found in this article was called Nuclear Chaos. And when I saw this deity called Nuclear Chaos, it kind of it kind of brought me back to some research I had done a few years ago on the ancient Hindu gods and the ancient Hindu text called the Mahabharata, the Bhagavad Gita. And some of the things that was mentioned in this text had to do with this weapon, this bomb, this tool of destruction that was used to annihilate whole armies of people. That this thing was like a atomic bomb, like it's a massive blast and then afterwards the the um, energy from this weapon poisoned women's wounds and the ground was tainted, metal was poisoned. Um, there was this mass destruction, human hair and nails fell out. Um, it was just horrendous. And basically, I remember I did a video on my channel some time ago talking about the proof of fallen angel technology. and. One of the things that I mentioned in that video was that the gods, the Hindus, many of them look like deformed, like radiation poisoned fetuses that grew up. Like if you do your research into radiation poisoning and deformities that can come from that, I kid you not, a lot of the Hindu gods look like beings who were deformed by radiation. And so, it makes me wonder if this whole thing about messing around with particle physics, you know, 
atoms and splitting atoms and nuclear fission and fusion and colliding particles open new dimensions and all of this stuff has a demonic origin. CERN has opened the door and has learned through Google and D-Wave to communicate with demons. Who knows what monsters or demons are about to come through this portal. Actually, you don't need CERN to summon a demon. People deal with demons every day. So what's going on there? The demons are feeding them this information because they want an artificial intelligence. They have a way to entangle themselves with this AI artificial intelligence through quantum entanglement. Over the past few years, I found myself fascinated by the concept of quantum physics, quantum mechanics. And one thing that I've come to find is that there is a very spooky, supernatural, paranormal element to the study of quantum physics. Take the idea of what they refer to as spooky action at a distance or quantum entanglement, for instance. It's the idea that you can have an elementary particle. It could be an atom, a proton, an electron, neutron, etc., right? And this particle could exist where my fingers are right now. Then you could have another particle that it's quantumly entangled with. It can either be right there, right next to it, or it can be on the other side of the Earth. No matter how far and how separated these particles are, they will always be connected to each other through some type of unseen force or dimension. And thing is, when you have like a cell phone or a computer or anything that sends radio waves, those waves have to travel forth from your device to another device for those two independent devices to be connected. But with quantum entanglement on the other end, when you're dealing with elementary particles, the connection is instantaneous. Like, whatever happens to this particle on this side will automatically happen to the particle on the other side of the world with no delay, no time lapse, none of that stuff. And so, it makes you wonder, what is this unseen dimension that's connecting these two particles together? What happens when our computers get smarter than we are? You get the Terminator, you get Matrix, you get the Demon Seed all rolled into one fiction, but soon to be reality. The reason why the field of study of quantum entanglement is an important topic of a discussion to have is because of the fact that when you look at what they're doing with artificial intelligence and quantum computers, they found a way to send particles, elementary particles, into another dimension, into another realm. And then these particles come back with information. And bottom line, these computers, they, they're revolutionary. Like this is something that has never been done before. When you look at your average computer or your average laptop or phone that you buy from the store, they are not made to process information like this. Basically, artificial intelligence or quantum computers have found a way to copy the human mind, to copy, to copy consciousness on a mechanical level in machines. And what I mean by that is when you look at the way the nervous system, the human brain, or the biological um, electronic systems within all living creatures is formed, you will see that there's a lot of quantum entanglement involved. The reason why a human can have the feeling that they're looking outside of their body, that they're aware of the fact that they're looking through their eyes and seeing the world around them is because of the fact that even though your brain is a physical organism, there are parts inside of your brain that interact with another dimension. And that's why it feels like you exist 
inside of your body looking out. They found out how to do that with machines too. Another interesting thing to note about artificial intelligence is how it actually came into the workforce a long time ago. Uh, you had big um, major companies, uh, manufacturing companies that would use uh, robots to come in and replace humans. And uh, you know, there were a lot of complaints about that. They were like, oh, the robots are taking over. And so you have to understand that these robots were programmed or trained to do the jobs that humans normally did. So that is one of those ways in which it has uh, kind of uh, affected the lives of humans. Less jobs for humans because artificial intelligence is able to perform the same task. And so one thing we need to understand now to see the real agenda that is unfolding right before our eyes Robots no longer look like these weird looking mach machines that have arm movements and head movements and leg movements and some of them moving about like that. They are starting to make uh, robots that look more like you and I. Uh, these robots are looking more and more human. Now back in the day, they did have this strange human-like um, appearance. Uh, their goal is to make it to where you can't tell the difference. and. You know, there was a time before where they had robots that looked similar to humans, but you can tell very clearly that they were. But they are starting to up their technology uh, to the point where uh, the hair, the eyelashes, the eyeballs, all of that, the movements are getting more human-like. You can't believe, honestly, that um, there is not some strange agenda at work here, because it is. and. As long as they continue to dumb down the population, most people will not understand what is going to happen when artificial intelligence finally takes over. Demon Seed is a 1977 American science fiction horror film about the imprisonment and forced impregnation of a woman by an artificially intelligent computer. Dr. A. Harris is the developer of Proteus 4, an extremely advanced and autonomous artificial intelligence program. Proteus is so powerful that only a few days after going online, it develops a groundbreaking treatment for leukemia. Harris, a brilliant scientist, has modified his own home to be run by voice-activated artificially intelligent computers. I cannot, I cannot touch, touch your body, body as, as a man can touch you, you. but I am going to show you things which human eyes have never seen. In the privacy of a woman's room, against her will. This artificial intelligence computer runs his entire home, from the temperature to his security system. What does it sound like to you? Does it sound like this OK Google and Amazon Alexa? Don't you see what they're trying to do? Dr. A. Harris is actually Dr. Alex Harris. Think about it. Dr. Alex Harris, this is where the creators of Alexa got their inspiration from. They purposely named it Alexa. An article titled, How 1977's Demon Seed Predicted 2018's High-Tech Misogyny, states the following. When Donald Camel's Demon Seed debuted in 1977, critics largely didn't know what to make of this adaptation of a Dean Kuntz novel about an AI program called Proteus IV creepily voiced by Robert Vaughn, that takes control of an ultra-modern home and imprisons the woman who lives there, Julie Christie, ultimately conspiring to impregnate her with its cyborg offspring. Reviewers at the time, almost entirely white men, visibly struggled with the themes Camel laid out, and most resorted to simply dismissing the film as goofy and unbelievable. In what world could a house essentially raping a woman seem plausible? 
fast forward 40 years to June 2018, when the New York Times published a story by Nellie Bowles about a frightening new phenomenon. Smart homes that were being weaponized by abusive partners to terrorize women. Doors would lock and unlock on their own. Music would randomly play at deafening volume. Lights would turn off and on at all hours of the day. Some of the women subjected to this at first thought that they were losing their minds until they realized that their home's electronic systems had been hijacked by their absent partners. As far-fetched as Demon Seed seemed at the time of its release, it was metaphorically and presciently portraying marginalized people's fears of surveillance and control, a fear that is being eerily realized today. It's hardly surprising that two separate smart home-themed thrillers have been released just in the first half of 2018, Distorted and Netflix's Tau. It's an ironic coincidence that Amazon's AI home assistant, Alexa, echoes the name of Demon Seed's unwitting antagonist, Alex Harris, Fritz Weaver, the scientist who builds Proteus IV, and whose objective passivity ultimately allows his creation to torture his estranged psychologist wife, Susan, Christy. The film opens on Alex's last day in the house that will become Susan's prison, as Susan wonders aloud why they've decided to split up. Their marriage is failing, not because of a dissolution of love, but because Alex's obsession with perfecting Proteus has rendered him figuratively absent from the relationship. The script by Robert Jaffe and Roger O'Herson blueprints this marital riff with a rather on-the-nose line of dialogue from Alex. Well, what a pity. My dream turns out to be your nightmare. Just about all the technology we see today was in movies first. Eye scanners, multi-touch interfaces, electronic paper, and even crime prediction software was in the movie Minority Report. Satellite Zoom? Enemy of the State. Drones, Terminator, Androids, Blade Runner, Hologram, Total Recall, Virtual World, The Matrix Trilogy. Where are the writers of these movies getting their information from? Maybe it's the same place the Fox sisters got their info from. Demons. The Fox sisters were three sisters, Margareta, Katie, and Leah, from New York, who played an important role in the creation of spiritualism, the communication of spirits from the dead, or beings from the other side of reality. The two sisters used rapping to convince the older sister and others that they were communicating with a spirit. The girls addressed the spirit as Mr. Splitfoot, which is a nickname for the devil. Later, the alleged entity creating the sounds claimed to be the spirit of a peddler named Charles B. Rosna who had been murdered five years earlier and buried in the cellar. This was the beginning of spirit mediums in the modern world. In 1888, Helena Blavatsky published a book called The Secret Doctrine. Adolf Hitler slept with a copy of this book by the bedside. The book is said to be filled with ancient mystery wisdom that was impossible for her to know, not to mention she only had a sixth grade education. She channeled spirits and they gave her the knowledge to write the books. 
The D-Wave Quantum Computer and CERN is nothing more than a modern day medium machine that channels demons for information. You know, this is all knowledge of the occult and honestly, this idea of using machines to connect with another dimension, this is really not a new idea. Like even Thomas Edison had this idea for what would be called a spirit phone. It would be a device that you could use to communicate with the dead in another realm. So like this idea, this concept is not new. The idea of using machines to communicate with other dimensions that permeate our reality. I find it strange that the D-Wave computer resembles the Kaaba in Mecca. Was this done on purpose? I also notice that it resembles the Tesseract. Now watch this. The Tesseract, if you remember in the Avengers movie, the Tesseract is a very powerful cube used by Loki in the Avengers first movie to open up a portal or a wormhole that allowed this, um, these aliens to invade New York City. These particular aliens are known as Tatari. When it was stolen by Loki, he used the Tesseract to open the wormhole and allowed the Tatari aliens to invade New York City. The Tatari were a sentient species of cybernetically enhanced beings operating under a high mind intelligence. Demons in cyborg-like bodies part flesh and machine. This is really what they want to do. They want to create machines that will actually allow these demons to step in and operate. Now you say, man, this is the movie. Yeah, but this is what they're trying to do. And these things that we're summoning into the world now are not demons, they're not evil, but they're more like the Lovecraftian great old ones. There are entities that are not necessarily going to be aligned with what we want. Right? These people that own D-Wave and, and, and um, uh, um, uh, these guys that's creating this stuff, CERN, they are actually serious about bringing these entities into our world. We should be very careful about artificial intelligence. Um, if I were to guess at what our biggest existential threat is, it's probably that. I mean, with artificial intelligence, we are summoning the demon. A cyborg is short for cybernetic organism, which is a being with both organic and mechanical electronic body parts. Interesting, huh? The Terminator was a cyborg. Remember, he had flesh-like tissue on the outside, which made him look human. But on the inside was what? Robot. An android is a robot or other artificial being designed to resemble a human and often made from a flesh-like material. Historically, androids were completely within the domain of science fiction and frequently seen in film and television. But recent advances in robot technology now allow the design of functional and realistic humanoid robots. A cyborg is short for cybernetic organism. This is a being with both organic and mechanical electronic body parts. See, see, you gotta understand what's going on here. Look at Rockefeller, right? This man, Rockefeller, lived to be, what, about 100 years old? How many transplants did he get? Heart transplants. Was it eight? All of these heart transplants are trying to keep this man alive. Now, you got to know he had a host of demons in him, right? You got to know it. Just look at this guy. You got to know he had a host of demons in Rockefeller, right? So now his demons, because of his, his body has passed on, his demons need a new place, right? See, now imagine if instead of getting a human heart, 
he could get a cybernetic heart, right? A heart that's made out of part machine or something, right? Then these spirits can occupy his body as long as this machine will keep him going, right? This is the kind of thing that these people are thinking about here. This is why they have so many artificial body parts. Artificial Body Parts In 2013, the world's first bionic man debuted at Washington's Smithsonian Museum. Called Frank, short for Frankenstein. So we have retinal implants in his brain that pick up, well, if he had a brain, he would have a retinal implant, that pick up the image from this tiny camera that is then transmitted directly into the person's brain, restoring a sense of vision to the blind. And this is not science fiction. This device has received FDA approval only two days ago and will wow. go into actual people. The $1 million robot was a showcase hookup for 28 different mechanical body parts. He could breathe. He had a beating heart and his own artificial blood. In you know. his artificial circulatory system, there is uh, artificial blood, the first prototype of real wow. artificial blood made of nanoparticles mm -hmm. that have the ability to bind and give off oxygen, just like real blood. Right. In a fast-moving field, advances are coming that the popular imagination hasn't caught up with. Here are some of the latest states of the art. The Bionic Eye Prototype bionic eyes go back as far as 1983. Currently, the only retinal prosthesis approved for use in the U.S. is the Argus II, a pair of glasses plus an implant that sends impulses down the optic nerve. In May of this year, it had its first British recipient, Ray Flynn, an 80-year-old with muscular degeneration. The sight it provides is far from perfect, though, and only a small number of recipients get the ability to read. The Bionic Nose In 2013, Swedish and Spanish researchers created a lab-based nose that can identify chopped pears and apples. The Bionic Exoskeleton Originally developed by the U.S. military labs to help soldiers carry heavy loads, the Bionic Exoskeleton is helping disabled people walk. In 2012, Claire Lomas, who was paralyzed after a riding accident, completed the London Marathon in 16 days in an exoskeleton suit made by the Israeli firm Rewalk. The Bionic Hand The Bionic Hand that allows you to touch things has long been a reality. The Bionic Hand that allows you to feel things has proved far more elusive until last year when a Danish man was given the first feeling hand by a pan-European team in Italy. The Bionic Lungs While there are at least five teams worldwide working on different lung prototypes, the University of Michigan's has so far proved the most successful. It's the size and shape of a can and is attached to the body with artificial vessels made of Gore-Tex. The Bionic Heart The first artificial heart was implanted in 1982, but the organ has proved tricky to master. A Texan company, Bivacor, suggests it may have a solution to the problem of manufacturing a tiny machine that has to beat 42 million times per lifespan. Theirs won't beat at all, instead propelling blood around the body smoothly. The Bionic Pancreas A team at the University of Boston used a charmingly low-tech smartphone to monitor insulin levels, plus a permanently attached pump to constantly match the body's needs with the quantity of insulin supplied, thereby giving hope to millions of people with diabetes. The Bionic Brain Well, not quite, but Deep Brain Stimulation, a technique that involves a brain implant, a sort of pacemaker for the brain, has already been used to treat 110,000 people with Parkinson's disease. Remember the $6 million man? <laughs> that was my show. 
back in the 70s when I was a kid, that was my show, The Six Million Dollar Man. The man barely alive, that they uh, gave him new legs, uh, robot legs, a robot arm, and a robot eye, right? And he had all this power running around, half robot, half man. You couldn't have told me that they would ever be on the brink of really creating something like this. Wow. Smart tablets, smartphones, branded, Android. Think about what we're saying here. Smart tablets and phones called Android? Why? Why call it Android? Because they are smart. They are intelligent. There was a song um, that came out years ago by the group called Rush. The song is called Body Electric. Listen to these lyrics. The Body Electric by Rush. One humanoid escapee, one android on the run, seeking freedom beneath the lonely desert sun, trying to change its program, trying to change the mode, crack the code, images conflicting into data overload. Memory banks unloading, bytes break into bits. Unit 1's in trouble, and it's scared out of its wits. Guidance systems break down, a struggle to exist, to resist. It replays each of the days, a hundred years of routines, bows its head and prays to the mother of all machines. In the lyrics of a song by a group named Rush, they actually mention an android that bows his head and prays to the mother of all machines, which reminds me of an article about an artificial intelligence religion. The article reads as follows, Humans will worship AI Messiah, God robot religion expected to boom. A so-called God robot will be worshiped by millions of people because it will have mankind's best interest at heart, it has claimed. Former Google and Uber engineer Anthony Lewandowski founded AI-based religion, the way of the future, so people can worship a godhead robot that is a billion times smarter than humans. He wants to create a new church that revolves around artificial intelligence and has people worshiping at the feet of a super machine. And tech experts have said humans are likely to accept the robot as a higher being. John Mitchell, a lawyer and AI expert, said human beings in general tend to worship supreme understanding. Mr. Mitchell claims the same drive that compels people to believe in God and follow religions will work for artificial intelligence. This new religion, way of the future, dedicated to worship of AI and other religions have a gospel called the manual with a liturgy and a highly anticipated physical place of worship though none of these have yet been developed the church was founded in 2015 as you can see the minds and thought processes of mankind have been infiltrated and whited out by the technological advances of artificial intelligence. People are none the wiser and will accept these artificial beings as supreme over mankind. This is the whiting out of the mind. The Perfect Virus by Annihilator Creeping through the system, spreading like a disease, a cancer-like affliction to bring us down to our knees. Created for the masses, systematic crash and burn, to pillage and to plunder this cyber-hungry world. Circulate, devastate, recreate the perfect virus, entering the mainframe like a rogue, killing, hunting machine weaving its web of destruction like nothing before ever seen. Artificial intelligence wiping it all as it learns. Crucial data corruption. The chips are down and they burn. 
I will deploy and terminate. I will expand and annihilate. You will scramble to vaccinate. You will find out that it's too late. Picking up the pieces in the aftermath of the war. A technological genocide the likes never seen before. Seeking restitution as the world comes crashing down. The creator of this Trojan horse has vanished, never found. So, what exactly are they trying to do here? What are they trying to create? They're trying to create an artificial intelligence that's going to run everything. It's going to run this entire country. It's going to run your home. It's going to run your bank account. It's going to run your car. This artificial intelligence is actually going to run everything. And it's going to be smart. It's going to be so smart until it's going to one day want to take over. Now, why are they even trying to do this? Because you got to understand where their minds are. Think about the creators of the movie Demon Seed. Why did they name it Demon Seed? The movie is about an artificial intelligence robot that wants to take the scientist that created its wife and impregnate her so that she can have his baby. So if the baby is part robot and part human, why are you calling it Demon Seed? Do you see what they what they, they put it in the movie? That's because these demons are making it known that they're going to have these demon seeds, these, these artificial intelligence is actually going to usher in their demons into our world in a way that they'll be able to control these machines. Right? This is what they want to do. They call it a demon seed. They could have called it android seed, right? A robot seed, huh? A cyborg seed. They call it a demon seed because this is how they're going to bring these demons into the world using D-Wave. Quantum entanglement, quantum physics, right? Using CERN. This is exactly what they want to do. So you better be ready. As you can see, through computers, smartphones, and other devices, humans are already hooked on artificial intelligence. We saw it in the movies, but we never thought it was possible. Like addicts, we have such a craving for electronic devices that we will gladly succumb to their control. We have become like Harrison Ford in the movie Blade Runner, falling in love with an android. Could we be facing the same future as in the movie Terminator? As mankind grapples with the fact that strange things are happening in the universe that are not understood by most and hard to explain by others, we must all realize that behind the scenes, these strange things will continue to unfold until their full manifestation. Our lack of discernment or concern will not stop the inevitable as the powers that be continues to fiddle around with the powers of darkness. Those who operate with the powers of darkness are full-on enemies of mankind. Yet mankind continues with frivolous contentions with one another that have been directly instigated by these very same entities that control and operate spiritual wickedness in high places. We have been inundated by so many distractions that we cannot see what truly lies ahead. There are plans that will directly involve your very sanity, yet most have no idea what is going on because of the need and desire to fulfill the needs of fleshly pleasures. Each day, most people rise with one thought in mind. 
How can I please me today? The very system that we've come to depend on has each of us under surveillance so that they can gather all of the information needed to further control us. What we may deem as a glitch in the system is actually very well planned out and calculated. The masses have been deceived by the very media that entertains them on a daily basis. From television, to movies and music, and the internet, we have been given a buffet of distracting entertainment that comes in all shapes, colors, flavors, and sizes. With the recent introduction to social media over the past 20 years or more, regular individuals are able to write their own script, create their own drama, promote their own cause, or start their own firestorm with provocative information release. When you consider the fact that we are dealing with a population of people worldwide who are under the spell of this mass media, the perfect storm has been created for the powers that be to usher in the events that are spoken of in biblical end time prophecy. The Bible tells us that in the last days, men's hearts will fail them for fear, and that many would seek death and death would flee from them, or that strange things would happen that will cause many to faint. With the use of artificial intelligence, the powers that be have been able to normalize the very devices that they are going to use to terrorize mankind. Using all kinds of craftiness and manipulation, they have created and given us products that tickle our imaginations and indulge our human fantasies. As we use and grow dependent on these products, we are being enticed in a way that will make it impossible for us to see what lies ahead. If anyone tries to bring truth to the masses, they will declare that you are a conspiracy theorist who watches too much television and cannot decipher what is true, when in fact, they are the ones who are delusional. Just like the movie Distorted, the tagline says, Don't fear the lies, fear the truth. The truth is so very complex to many that they would rather believe the lies to help them cope with life. However, in reality, the truth will always be and will not fade away because of our unwillingness to believe, accept, or understand it. The powers of darkness are in full operation and are about to unleash some unthinkable things into the earth. Ready or not, here they come. The unleashing of the demon seed.